What are the actual cultural reasons why so many Asian parents are so hard on their kids? Let's talk about it. Well, it's because we come from overpopulated agricultural societies, so we really value filial piety. And plus, if you don't want to end up a farmer, you got to be a scholar. It's that simple. Well, we got to talk about it, Andrew. This is going viral right now, Andrew. So many people on so many different internet forums are asking, what are usually the reasons why Asian parents are so critical of their kids? Is it insecurity or culture? This guy goes on to say, man, nothing's ever good enough. You have to strive for money. You're a failure if you're not a doctor. And even if you achieve it and you get the high status and the money, you're probably not going to be happy as the kid raised by these parents. Oh, man, this is so relatable to so many people on different levels, I think. I relate to it not because we had the strictest, worst parents, by the way. I love them very much, but we got a taste of it. Okay, so, you know, we're we're in there far enough, but obviously I know plenty of people in our community and friends of friends who went through it on the extreme level. So, right, right, gonna, right. You're talking about the 8 out of 10s, the 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10 toxic tiger parents. We know some people who have oh, them. Oh, I've seen it. I've seen it firsthand. But we're going to talk about it, seven reasons why, Asian parents are so strict on their kids to a point where the kids don't love it uh, and it makes them very unhappy and possibly resents them. But I hope that if your family is or was like this, that you can learn something from it and at least talking through it uh, may help you make sense of it all. Right, and right, we're not right. here to make excuses for Asian parents, but we also do want to understand and empathize to an extent. Real quick, I got to define what is culture because he goes, is it the insecurity of being an immigrant, which totally contributes to it, right? But he says, is it the culture? I got this chart, Andrew. What is culture? Child rearing methods is right next to religion, food, language, folk art, celebrations, jokes, and mannerisms. Mm. So child rearing is part of culture. Right, right. And I would say this, like, I can speak for Chinese culture. Chinese culture has, like, deep-rooted culture in all those things, all those bubbles, right? Yeah. And sometimes some other people's cultures, at least of what they know, may not be as, I guess, well-defined in those bubbles. But I can tell you this, Chinese it's been around for a while, so they definitely got those bubbles defined. And de to define how you even raise a child, there's culturally regulated customs and practices, physical and social settings, and psychology of the caretaker's parento ethno theories. Mm. And then, of course, Andrew, there's this Asian kid on this book titled Child Rearing Practices, Attitudes, and Cultural Differences. We're talking about, Andrew, every single Asian American movie has been about strict parents turning red, farewell, tiger tail, et cetera, et cetera. Joy Luck Club was about strict parents. Yeah, man, it's deep. It's deep with the Asians. Um, Confucianism, Andrew. Within Confucianism, the child is viewed as a direct extension of the parents and ancestors, almost sharing a singular unbroken thread. Whereas in the West, it would be like separate macaroni noodles strung together on a necklace, but the macro macaroni noodles are not the same noodle. They're, they're still separated. Right. So I guess what I'm saying is it's all relative to a scale. Anyway, let's get into the number one points, Andrew. Number okay. one point. The number one reason why so many parents are strict on their Asian kid. Filial piety. Like oh we said. Oh my goodness. Filial piety. Just pop up the definition right now. It is considered a key virtue in Chinese and other East Asian cultures. And it is the subject of many, many stories. Right. I mean, we're talking about be good to one's parents, take care of the parents, engage in good conduct, obey the parents, not just towards the parents, but also outside of the home. Uh, be a good representative of your family. Ting just, mama the hua. Yeah. Listen to your mom. Uh, ensure male heirs. Obviously, this is old school. So uphold fraternity amongst brothers. Uh, give wisely advice to one's parents. And so basically, filial piety in the traditional sense is all about essentially being good and obeying your parents and obeying your ancestors or doing right by your ancestors, I should say. Right, right, right. And uh, it's interesting, Andrew, in Yunshan, which is late night noodle spot in Chinatown, New York City, it's Yunnan Mishia and the Crossing Bridge Noodles. They literally have the filial piety quote in the restaurant. Yeah. It's insane. No, and, and by the way, guys, uh, you know, we're not Confucianism experts, but I will say I've long known that filial piety is one of the highest priorities and Confucianism and Confucianism is well, one of the main influences in like Chinese. But, and that's the weirdest thing because in the West standard, you're allowed to question your parents and your parents have to give you an explanation. But in a lot of old school Asian culture, you're just like, why do I have to do that? And it's like, because I said so. That because is dad said so. So you're doing it. 
Do it because dad says so. Right. And sometimes, sometimes it could work out, but sometimes it could really not work out. And I think that that's why you see such variability because I know people with tiger parents, Andrew, that resent them for it deeply, but other people that are go, ah, you know, they trained me pretty good. So I'm a strong soldier of life. Yes. Uh, guys, again, I don't think filial piety in itself is necessarily bad. I think there's a lot of great virtues to it. I think that sometimes though, uh, if the parent is telling the kid to do something they hate all the time, then yes, the kids will resent Or them. if the parents, Andrew, are basically telling them something that was right 500 years ago in Asia, but does simply doesn't work in America in modern day. Yes. The misalignment, yeah. the outdatedness. There's a misalignment because like Asian parents, it, maybe their goal they're not all like deliberately trying to morph you or shape you into a fully uh, like super Western person because they can't, maybe they can't do that for you. Right. So they're only just raising you how they know. Anyways, they're, no, get, no, they're, Andrew, they're raising you to be the winter soldier instead of Captain America. Right. Point uh, number two, Andrew, they're strict in Asia even more so. So why wouldn't Asian American parents be more strict than your average white, black, Latino parent. Yeah, this uh, at is, least on grades. This is pretty self-explanatory, but let me just describe generally how strict it can be in Asia. I mean, they have like the Gao Kao, which is this big, huge, like entrance exam that everybody takes. Actually, they have the same thing in uh, Japan and Korea, yeah. Taiwan same as well. Thing. No, no, in all the East Asian countries, for sure. I, I think they probably do it in other countries too, but it's a huge deal in these countries. I'm saying like, like kids are training for years and they all shut down. It stops like all activities so that people can take it. It's like the SAT times, probably times two or three importance. Man, probably times 10. Yeah. Because in Asia, at least in China, I don't know how it works in other countries, uh, you get slotted into your major based off your test scores. Right. So, so basically, if this test means so much, of course, parents who care or can care are going to be super strict on you to do a good job on the Gaokao because it's going to determine so much of your life moving forward as far as like, oh, which college you go to, what kind of uh, tier of society you're in, da-da-da-da-da. Right, right, right. Number three, they're in survival mode here in the U.S. As new immigrants, they're going to fall back on what they know and understand. Yeah, and I think for this, it's like a lot of parents, like maybe they don't know all the ins and outs of America and maybe English is their second language or third language, so they're not top tier at it. But basically, they're going to rely on like being strict because they just know being strict works. And maybe they see the things in the news in America or the music or the cultures and they're like, you know what? No, 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 no. Like, I don't know really what the right answer is, but I just know I'm going to keep my kid away from this. Right. And it depends on how much they assimilated, what specific subgenre of American or Western culture they assimilated to. Some people call it a trauma response. A trauma response in a person decontextualized over time looks like a personality. Trauma in a family looks like family traits, but it's actually, it looks like culture, but it's actually just trauma. This is what uh, some people believe about traumatic Asian culture that people misinterpret just because they grow up around it as culture. Interesting. Do, does it have an example of the traumatic, that how trauma becomes a personality? You mean I, kind of just like, like being scared of everything because maybe you had trauma. Right. And then Asia. you're like, oh, Asian culture, I'm scared. Asian culture is being scared. And I'm like, yeah, I guess I could see how you arrive to that conclusion, but that's like a, uh, your own trying to make sense of the world around you and you kind of get it on in the right direction, but not on the dot. Wow, that starts to kind of make sense to me. That's very interesting. Right, right, right. And, and you know, I think a lot of people are tapped into like only old paths of being successful. It's not that the Asian parents are fully wrong. Being a doctor is a good but hard life, but there's just way other ways that they're not aware of. Right. Uh, way more pathways that they're not aware of. Point number four. Immigration is more of a self-selective population due to how many hoops you must jump through to even get from Asia to the USA. You get more ambitious people. Yeah, I mean, I would say there's on the spectrum, there's two types of like Asian immigrants primarily. It's the ones that struggled to come here or maybe came over here as refugees, right? So maybe not the most ideal situations, but you know, at least they got to flee their country and are in a safe, better situation. And then on the far end, it's the... It's the parents who made it over here as students or high achievers in something. They came over because they have a supreme skill or a high-skilled worker or something like that. So 
Anywhere on that spectrum, they can have different ideas on how to raise you. And I've seen friends from families who are more maybe on the refugee side who their families are just really happy that the kids are healthy and all together in America. Like they're just happy that the family's together because it was so tumultuous to make it here, right? And whatever was going on in the motherland. And then on the other side, I've seen the far extreme where it's like these parents come you know, maybe their parents are super educated and super high achieving. So they have, they're building in from the get go, these high expectations. Like they got a plan out. Our kids are going to Dude. learn piano. Our kids are going to Dude. learn Chinese. Their parents and, are, duh, 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 and, and then they're going and, to go to Harvard. And I still, I'll tell you the extreme of that. We, uh, we know somebody and he was our neighbor for a while. He's not our neighbor anymore. So I can say this. He was an Ivy league lawyer and his sister became an artist that just like hosted art galleries and didn't make a lot of money. And he, hated her like a op oh. he treated her like a op because he was like well my parents like her more but she just became an art gallery director and i'm the ivy league lawyer me me and nobody liked that guy but he couldn't understand because he was so tapped in to the feudalistic old school rankings that his parents put him into mm. so that that's like we said that there's there's yeah. ex, there's the listen extreme. as a parent as immigrant parents or any parent you're hoping that your laissez-faire kind of like oh let the kid choose and then the kid will be happy and hopefully be successful yeah everybody's hoping that works out but obviously a lot of parents don't want to take that risk so they're like oh we're locking in like right. i'm locking this guy in he they know what to do after when they go to school and then from dinner time and then after dinner time i got it all planned out uh point number five even if they're not happen to be uh even if they're your parent is not particularly ambitious themselves relative to other immigrants they might get sucked into that style simply through peer pressure for example in the movie dd Dee Dee andrew which you just saw joan chen is almost basically like a single mom and she doesn't she's not hyper academic herself but she feels pressured by her friend group to put her kids in all these like crazy sat prep classes and after school classes so it's almost like even if you are in not individually like this, once you get to a country where most people who look like you are doing that thing, you just fall into that pattern. Yeah, it, I think it's really interesting because obviously how you look or in an immigrant's case, country of origin, usually outward at first defines your immediate community because you're going to be probably more close to the other families that are like right, you. You can operate Usually, your infrastructure of right? life and things. Yeah, so you're going to join the Asian church or your Vietnamese church, Filipino church, Korean church, Chinese church, Taiwanese church, whatever, whatever, right? And when you join those communities, you can't help as a parent to fall into some of that peer pressure. Oh, their kid's doing that. Oh, their kid's doing that. Oh, you guys are doing that with your kids after school. Oh my gosh. And then you're thinking like, you as a, maybe as an immigrant parent, you don't even care that much yourself but you also care how other people perceive your family. So you're about to push your kid. Right. Point number six, Andrew, wealth in general is just very highly valued in Asian culture. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, generally, you know, outside of a few countries, religion is not that big a part of Asians' lives. It's more about achievement and wealth. And some people, Andrew, on the outside say materialism. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think the materialism in across Asia is getting a little out of hand, as I think materialism in the Western world and maybe all over the globe is getting out of hand. But those are your hyper-capitalistic yeah. places, right? America and East Asia. Yeah, and maybe, I, I mean, I think, you know, even other very highly religious countries, like maybe they value, like if you're a good steward of that religion more, maybe if you become a pastor or a priest or a... a, a, a you know, the, the leader. Rise up the hierarchy. Yeah, if you're a leader in that religion, maybe, you know, your parents are still very proud of you, but obviously if you, the country of origin that you come from is not super religious, then you won't care as much. Right, right, right. I think that it's just like about caring about things. Like if you look at Serbia in the Olympics, Andrew, how they were like, they almost beat Team USA. And it wasn't because they were more talented. It was because they cared about winning for Serbia so much more than Team USA even cared about winning for Team USA. Mm -hmm. So it goes to show, I mean, caring can get you pretty far, at least in spurts. Point number seven, they live vicariously through you and view you as an extension of themselves. Oh, man. Do you think this is the hardest part for a lot of people? Because like we said, there's entire Reddit forums dedicated to Asian kids or half Asian kids who are complaining about their toxic Asian parent and the filial piety and the weight of their ancestors like yeah. i said it's not it could go it, it, it's about the application in your own life it could go either way yeah i think it's really tough and i can't say that i've experienced this firsthand but you know for some friends of friends that i know where they're like their immigrant parents 
might their parents grew up in a better family, but then they became refugees due to the war. They came to America and the parents didn't make as much of themselves as they hoped. So then they put all those expectations on the kids to kind of make you, up for you're it. You're saying to regain the lost glory. Yeah, to kind of regain the glory of the family. And then by that, they're pushing their kids super, super hard. Um, and it's just really tough, man. I mean, I think like, I think it's really interesting for this point. I don't know if this applies to every strict Asian parent, but sometimes I would like wonder to like, let's say for example, Asian father to Asian son, like if this Asian father sees this Asian son as an extension of himself, then you really got to look at what this father is teaching his son and why, right? Like, is he, does he care if he's socialized? Does he care if he's like working out? Does he care about all these other things? No, I, even if he is a, becomes a proverbial eunuch in the Western Anglosphere, uh, the eunuch, they still rise up their, their status in the imperial court. Right. So then in that case, that Asian father is just kind of one track minded. So I don't know if that means he sees him as an extension of himself, because is that how you would treat the extension of yourself? But maybe they're, you know, no one's perfect. So, yeah, I definitely think that, uh, like I said, man, you see some Asian parents that did a 10 out of 10 jobs, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And, you know, maybe they were a 10 out of 10 and giving their kids the, 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 the academic coaching and then in terms of socialization coaching, especially towards the sons, man, I give some of the dads a three out of 10 rating. Ooh. But they're like, you know, for me, I only cared about the academic side. I didn't care about the son's social side because the social side is only going to distract anyway. Whoa, guess what? Social life still matters, man. Still affects how you're treated. It still affects how you feel about yourself, what you see when you look in the mirror, friend groups, etc. Ultimately, guys, um, here, like we said, here's a few more charts about the culture wheel. What is culture? These are, I think these are pretty good ways for people who didn't study, you know, whatever anthropology in college or whatever. Let's just take a look at these questions right here. I have no idea. These comments. I have no idea. I watched the Joy Luck Club and the mom says, aim for the moon. Even if you miss, you will still land in the stars. Basically, tiger parents push their kids so hard that even if the kid fails, they're still successful. It's a weird form of tough love. Yeah. 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 And I guess, I mean, I feel like in a way they're being super, super strict sports coaches, but of a sport that you can't get out of. You know what I mean? Like, it's like a sport you're forced into and you have a very, very ambitious, pushy coach, which the coaches would say that type of thing like, hey, you know what? You better train like you're going to go to the NFL. And if you don't, you, maybe you get a college scholarship. You know, or that's kind of the thinking. So I get that that does make some logic. That's yeah. logical, logical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, I would say maybe the easiest movie that was popular was uh, there was a movie of the uh, Russian pianist who was like trained by his father and he ended up homeless. And then he was, he was like playing Liberace at a 10 out of 10 level and shocking the world. It was based off a real story, but uh, he obviously had a very traumatic childhood. Um, this guy just said, you know, for example, uh, why we've seen so much bad stuff happen in Asia as a parent, why would we want our kids to end up like being these like low level people in the American society, we came from a place where we saw all the horrible outcomes of that because Asia society, Andrew, is pretty harsh to the, I guess, lower tier ranks of society. Mm. So that was somebody's explanation of it. And of course, this other person explained it from a sociological standpoint, Andrew. Uh, Asia, for a long time, was a highly populated agricultural society. Basically, it, everybody had to know their part in the system. That's why the nail that sticks out gets hammered down. So everybody is thinking within that ag agricultural, feudal, imperialistic society and how to rise up. You would much rather be a farmer. I mean, I'm sorry, you'd much rather be a scholar than a farmer. Mm. So basically, if you're, those are your two choices, you're going to be tilling the fields or study your way up to be this like imperial person in the court. That's a way better life. Yo, that is so funny. Can you imagine that in some Asian parents' minds in America, they're thinking like, okay, so what is my son going to be? Either a farmer or a scholar. Hey, what do you want to be? A farmer or a scholar? And then the son's like, that. Why are those the only two options in America? Like, what about 
a real estate agent or something. <laughs> right, because some real estate, a lot of real estate agents, especially the more upper half, they make a lot more than scholars do in terms of annual income. Or what about a graphic designer, Dad? Yeah. Right, that maybe oh, doesn't make as much as a real estate agent, but it's all variable. If you go to top well, I'm just what I'm saying is that there's more options than that. Obviously. Right, right, right. Um, ultimately, I think it's better to feel intrinsic motivation. A lot of ambitious immigrants, they're going to poke their kids with the stick. You know how like you can poke your kid in the ass with a carrot, or you can put the carrot in front of them, or there's like a lot of ways to use the carrot. I know it was a stick. I was you joking. said poke the kids in the butt with a carrot. <laughs> but uh, it's, like, it's like, uh, it's better to have intrinsic motivation. It is, but uh, some parents are incapable of imbuing their kid with that. Right, right. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's pretty variable based on the family you were born yeah, into. Yeah, I mean, I, I think all we hope for in the later generations, and this is not to dump on the generations before, you know, obviously people had varying, uh, a varying difficulty with different parents. But I guess like, all I'm hoping for is like the next generation of parents, like they just understand that there's other ways to do it and that they can figure it out. Right. And your kid could be meant for one of those other ways. Yeah. They could be, but it's your op, you know, as they don't crush it. If your kid's got a talent for being a small business entrepreneur, then let them be a small business entrepreneur. Cause in America, that's incredibly lucrative if you do it the right way, like more so than other countries, you know? Um, I think everybody in life has different baseline genetics and um, you, you get in a lot of confirmation loops and confidence loops in terms of like, oh yeah, I'm good at this thing, so I keep doing it and then I get even better at it and I get more positive feedback. Same thing with negative feedback. You tend to stop things that create a negative feedback loop in your, uh, within yourself. And obviously a mixed approach is the best with some slight, you know, bamboo style flexibility for everybody's individual differences. But I tell you this, Andrew, do you agree with me that the kids that are Asian American right now that are 10 years old, are going through a very different experience, more gentle parenting than the previous generations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, right? Because they're going to be adapting to it. And, you know, I'll tell you this. It's always easier as a parent to loosen up than get stricter. So I guess it's not terrible that we're coming from a stricter, more hardcore judgmental baseline. But definitely try to fix the flaws and keep the strengths of whatever you can. All right, everybody, that's it. Let us know what you think in the comments down below about why so many Asian parents are so hard on their kids and is it going away? But definitely, hopefully, uh, we were breaking down the cultural reasons why a lot of our parents, especially the ones that are probably 55 years old and, and higher, you know, those parents definitely probably on average were a lot more strict. But anyways, guys, let us know in the comments down below what you think. Was this video helpful? Hit us with that super thanks. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.